little yarnivores and spiderettes and arachnids. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial for you today. And I'm going to show you how to do this oh so delicately lovely lacy Bruges lace. I recently discovered this in a book and I thought, yeah, I'll give it a go, right? This is so lovely. You know, for something that's, you know, uh, you know, very, very open weave, perfect for warm weather, or for something really elegant. And for this piece, I used the shawl in a ball, and I thought that it would be perfect because of the very slow changing colorway. Um, also, a solid color would look lovely, but I thought this would look really great. And I am not disappointed with the results. And I'm still working on it, as you can see. And this actually is, let me see here. This is the show and a ball of the colorway Mindful Move. And I always tell you guys to be mindful. And uh, absolutely love this. Now, because this is a thinner weight yarn, I used a size G crochet hook. But for the purposes of the tutorial, I'm going to show you with worsted weight yarn and a size I hook so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Wow. Um, and the beauty of this pattern is that if you were to make it into a scarf, which is what I'm doing, you can make it as wide or as narrow as you want. This would be an awesome wrap. Absolutely awesome. Or instead of doing the, the scarf this way, you could do it lengthwise, and that would be really cool too. Once you have the basic format of the construction down, you can totally do it. it it's almost like Tinker Toys. It's fabulous. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so I've got my eye crochet hook and I've got some worsted weight yarn. It's just Red Heart Super Saver. It's my usual go-to because I've got tons of it. And as far as the shawl and a ball, absolutely love it. It's so delicate, which really lends itself to this pattern. The colorway is perfect. Need I say more? So. We're going to start with a slip knot, like so, and then we're going to chain up nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we're going to do a double crochet into the sixth chain from the hook. So it's three, four, six. Okay. So we're going to do a double into the sixth. like so. It's going to create an arch. And then we're going to do three more double crochets in the remaining chains. And I know that the pattern looks more complicated than this, but actually this, what I'm doing right now, this is the pattern. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. And that's why I said these are like the Tinker Toys. Um, so now we have one arch. And we're going to do another one. We chain up five. One, two, three, four, five. Turn the work. And then into that first double crochet, we're going to do a double crochet. And that creates another arch. And then we do three more double crochets, one on top of each. So that's one, and two, and three. And the entire basis of this project is the exact same thing over and over and over, which is great for ones that you really don't want to pay attention to. And like I said, it looks so much more complicated than it actually is. So we're going to chain up five again. And you turn the work. And you do a double in the first, and then you do three more doubles. It's as simple as that, believe you me. And if you want to go crazy delicate, you can use crochet thread 
like they used for making doilies. Um, I would not suggest starting out with crochet thread. Start with some thicker yarn so that you can actually see what you're doing and understand the process first. So right now, as you can see, we have a total of three arches. Now, I am going to, off camera, do a total of 13 arches. Is that 13? 12 arches. Okay, I'm going to do 12 arches in total, um, and I will meet back up with you, and we will continue on. Back in a flash, my dears. Alrighty, so I have a total of 12 arches, and of course, when you're going along, it's really quite easy to see where you're at, because it's just 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Shaboom. Alright, so now... What we're going to do is we are going to work our way around the U-turn, so to speak, okay? And now, the number of actual arches that you start off with, it is fairly arbitrary. It really doesn't matter that much, except for the fact that what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be linking the first four, one, two, three, and four, of these arches. So it's going to loop around, capturing the first four, and then the next two are going to make up the remaining width of the scarf. Now, with the one that I did with this, actually, I did a total of 20. Just, just so that you know, I did 20 arches, and then I did the turn. You know, if you want to, uh, you know, compare and con you know compare and contrast and so forth, uh, just so that you're aware. So <clears throat> now to turn the arch, what we're going to do is instead of chaining five, we're going to chain two. All right, and we are going to pull up a loop for these first four loops. So you pull up a loop. And then you go to the next one, and you pull up a loop, go to the next one, pull up a loop, and go to the fourth, and you pull up a loop. And then you pull through all five loops on your hook. And you don't want to do this too tightly, otherwise it will bunch. And there will be some curvature, which it's just sort of the nature of the beast, but... You know, it, it does lay flat, as you saw on the uh, intro. So, after pulling through all, you chain three. And then you turn your work. And you yarn over, and you do your four double crochets. And that is going to create our curvature. Now we need to continue going to the right. So we shall. So to do that, we're going to continue by making another arch. So that's chaining a five. One, two, three, four, five. Turn the work. And just as we have been, you do your four double crochets across. Like so. And then you chain two. And then we need to get into this next open available loop right there. So we're going to do a single crochet into that loop, and then a chaining of three. Then we turn the work, 
and then we do our four double crochets back where we started. Okay, and now we're going to create another arch, so that's chaining a five. Turn the work, and then we do our four double crochet. And then we chain two again. And we're going to capture this last loop available with a single crochet. And then we chain three. And turn the work. And do four doubles on this side like so. Alright, so we have made a full U-turn, as it were. Let me get this all straightened out here. <laughs> All right, ta-da! And so now what we need to do is we need to, with our tail end of course, you know, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to build out our working yarn, so to speak, you know, our, our ribbon, if you will. We need to build this out further so that we can go around again and create another U-turn, because it's sort of a serpentine kind of effect that we have going on here. Um, and uh, so we are going to continue right along, and uh, th oh, this is so easy, and I hope you guys are getting it, and I'm going to do a couple of repeats so that I really hope that you do understand the whole process. All right, be back in a flash. All right, so continuing on where we left off, we are going to need six new arches. This one here, because it's connected, does not count. And so basically, it really is just a matter of, you know, doing the chaining of five, turning the work, and doing the four doubles. and we're not connecting anything. We are just going in a straight line just as we did when we started our piece. So we've got one fresh arch right there. Turn the work. And then four more doubles. Okay, so right now we have our two free arches right up there. So I'm going to keep crocheting until I have a total of six available arches. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've been working a bit off camera. So as you can see, I have, here's where we connected last. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, this will work no matter how long, uh, you know, how wide your piece is going to be, um, if you want um, the next turn 
to go around where the sides are flush with each other. You know, there are ways in which you can do it where, for instance, if I kept going further out, then this right in here, you know, like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to explain this. If you kept going further out and then did the turnover, then the edges wouldn't be completely flush. And actually this piece right here would be sort of sticking out on its own and kind of lonely looking. So, but I, I like the idea of it being more uh, uniform. It's just my personal preference. And of course you can fiddle around with it because it's very, very easy to do, very quick. And therefore, if you don't feel that your dimensions are right, it's not a huge loss of time and or effort. So, again, sorry for babbling, but I'm just trying to make this very, very clear for you. So, since I did my six fresh arches, we're now going to, again, chain two. And we're going to pull up loops in four of our arches. like so. And then we're going to pull through all five loops on the hook. Like so. And then chain three. Turn the work. And then do our four doubles. like so, chaining a five, turn the work, four doubles, also I was thinking this would make a really awesome table runner. Okay, so now since we have to connect, it's going to be a chaining of two. And this one right here is occupied because it was one of the ones that was gathered. So we have to go into this next available one. So we do a single crochet. And then we chain three. Turn the work. And then do our four doubles. And then we chain five. Turn the work. Four more doubles. Got caught there. And there is an alter uh, alternate, an alternative uh, way of doing your connections, which makes it even more lacy. Um, got mixed feelings on that because it is already ready, <laughs> quite lacy as it is. Um, but I will show you that too on the next pass. So again, we're going to chain two and we're going to capture the next available arch, which would be right here with a single crochet and then chain three, turn the work and do your four doubles. Okay. All right, so now, <clears throat> 
we have our serpentine action going on here. And you might be inclined to keep going and to connect into this space here. Um, the top two spaces, the arches, remain untouched for this particular pattern. Um, and then going back, you know, going back around this way and, you know, you're capturing, you know, the first four and then, so these two would remain untouched. And that is just how I've been doing it with this particular pattern. Now, as you can see, this does buckle a little bit. Uh, if you are wearing this as a scarf, it's not going to be very noticeable. Um, however, there is a way of making it a little less buckled. Um, and I'm going to show you that on the next pass. Now, since this one is connected, we're going to continue doing another six of our arches in exactly the same way. We're just, you know, working our strip upwards for a little bit. So it's, as usual, the chaining up of five, turn the work, and do four doubles. And so we're going to need, again, six of these arches in order to turn and do the next pass. And for the next pass, I'm going to show you a way of, as I said, making it a little bit more lacy. Now this is pretty lacy, but um, in the next pass, it'll uh, be a little less buckled on the curvature, I find. Okay, so I'm going to continue and I'm going to do my full six new arches and I will be right back. Alrighty, so I have my six fresh new arches right here. That's the last one. And we're going to do another U-turn. This time I'm going to show you the sort of lacier heightened method. Um, it's really not that different. Now, it's sort of a trade-off. This, I think, is a little buckly. However, um, it's not as lacy. The second version, which I'm about to show you, it's a bit more lacy, um, almost too lacy, but it doesn't buckle quite so much. So six of one, half a dozen of another, you know, you make the choice totally up to you. But I like to give you... I like to give you options, you know, I like to give you a choice. So we're going to chain two and we're going to pull up our four, you know, pull up loops from four of these arches, just as we have been doing. And so we've got our five loops on the hook. We're going to pull through all five. One, two, three four and five and chain three again, turn the work and do our four doubles. No difference there, right? The difference is how we connect the other stragglers. All right. And then we chain five again. Turn the work. Okay. Now, we're going to do our four doubles just as we have been doing. Okay. And Still going to chain two. However, this time we're not doing a single into this loop. We're going to do a double. So we start, of course, by yarning over and complete our double. And then chain three. Then turn and then do your four. 
Now, it might seem sort of an inconsequential point. However, to me, it does make quite a bit of difference as far as the look, the laciness, and the buckle factor, as I call it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> sorry, I was just untangling some yarn there. All right, so now, since that's connected, again, do your chain five. You turn your work. Do your four double crochets. chain two, and we need to connect to this straggler over here. So we're yarning over because we're going to do a double into this arch. Chain three, turn the work, and do your four doubles. Okay, so <clears throat> as you can see, this one that we just did, it is lacy. It is very, very open. And these are not quite so extreme. And I personally, I prefer this. Now, because there is added height with this last one that we just did, because there's added height, this has less of a tendency of buckling together. You know, I mean, it wasn't a huge issue, I don't think, but with the added height, it's much less so. Again, to each their own. I respect everybody's opinion. Um, that's why I wanted to give you the option for either or, you know, whatever works best for you. So basically, uh, to end this scarf, um, for lack of a better term, um, what I did just now, just ending it right there, that's where you would end it. Because where we started, it's, you know, this is our initial tail end. Uh, it's connected there. And the last row is connected there. So that is how you would finish it off. You would just cut the yarn, pull the loop through, and then sewing your ends. And uh, it's really as easy as that. Now, what I was saying before, if you wanted to go lengthwise with your scarf, um, instead of this being the width, if you wanted to, what you could do is figure out how long you wanted your scarf to be um, and do uh, a series of arches, okay? a really, really, really long strip of arches. Um, personally, I like my scarves to be approximately seven feet long. Um, so you would want a strip probably a little bit longer than that. Um, and then you would double back and, you know, you would do your U-turn. And so, for instance, if you wanted, um, now picture this U were, or well, actually in this case, it's a W, um, but you know, these U-turns were really elongated so that instead of the, the stripes, if you will, going this way, they would go lengthwise, totally up to you, giving you options, giving you ideas, you know, food for thought and all that stuff. So listen, I really hope that you liked this tutorial as always. And, uh, you know, as you can see, it works up pretty darn fast because it is so open, so lacy, and repetitious, which is great if you want a project that is um, one that you can be mindful doing. You know, you can have a, a meditative moment, if you will, and uh, it's a lot of fun, you know. Uh, this piece, actually, I started just the other day, uh, and I, I got pretty far on it, and I'm, I'm very pleased. So... 
<sighs> Enough of my babbling and rambling. I just love talking to you guys. Um, so listen, if you like the video, please do hit the like button. Uh, it really means a lot if you show your support for the channel. Um, if you have any questions, comments, um, etc., do so in the comments section down below. Um, if you haven't hit subscribe already, please do so because I do try to post new videos as often as I can, whether they be tutorials or audiobook readings or what have you. Um, and so listen, until next time, stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.